we should talk about Claude. So uh, AI coding, interesting, right? Uh, kind of pressing. Um, I've been using Claude for a, five days now. <laughs> uh, it feels longer. And I have some thoughts and I want to share them. Um, so what kind of, most of you know me for the Zig content that I've, I've put out uh, over the past six or seven months. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you for coming along in that journey and, and being a part of it. But what's really interesting is what actually started all of this for me was I wanted to build Plex, but for eBooks and comics. And uh, I was started doing it in Dino and I ended up seeing some stuff in Dino that I really liked. So I wanted to build a CLI as a separate project and I said, hey, let's do that in Dino. So I did and I was really unhappy with it uh, for a couple of reasons. But uh, that prompted me to try Zig and boy, howdy, I'm very happy I made that decision. Zig's still one of my favorite languages to write. However, I uh, started making more and more content, started doing more and more stuff in Zig, and the Plex for eBooks didn't really feel right in Zig with where the ecosystem was at. So I've kicked that can down the road, and it's something that I still need and I still would like to have. Uh, so what I ended up doing was um, a couple different things. I have tried uh, GitHub Copilot for a couple different things. I've had a couple videos about that. It's been okay. Um, I was at a coffee shop and I saw somebody coding away with cursor and it was just really neat to see uh, that experience of someone going through a project and just churning out code. Um, and I talked to him about it and he's like, what I'm doing is not particularly interesting or particularly complex, but it's great that cursor can take care of that for me. And I was like, hey, that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to try it. I tried cursor. It was uh, not great. I specifically wanted to use SvelteKit for a project, um, and I just wanted to... I took an existing project that I'd already built, uh, and I said, hey, how do I convert that to a prompt? So I converted that in my head to a prompt, and I tried prompting Cursor to create that project again from the ground up with none of my code as context. It didn't do great. So I thought, hey, maybe this isn't really working out. Uh, someone else recommended Claude Code um, and has been raving about it, so I figured I would try it. So I did, and it's it's actually really good. Uh, so I, I should caveat that. It's really good at certain things. Web dev stuff, it seems really strong at. So I, I'm going to pull up my screen, and we'll talk through this a little bit. This is what it has built for me for Dust. And this is Dust is the Plex for eBooks that I was talking about. Um a couple of key things. I had written a good chunk of the server in Dino already. So it picked up where I left off and was able to make some suggestions and flush things out. And I was really like, I, I was giving it really small prompts at first because I didn't want it to destroy what I had. And uh, that worked out really well. At one point I took a big leap and said, Hey, let's build a client for this server and use everything you know about this project, everything we've talked about so far and, you know, throw together a client. Uh, and it, you know, put together a to-do list, and one of the things was authorization, which the server already supported. Uh, so it built a login form and a register form and those type of things. And you know what? Let me just show you those. So it, it, uh, it built this. So you can register here. Uh, if you're a web dev or any cognizant user whatsoever, you'll notice the padding here is really wonky. And it's like, it's little things uh, that, are sort of off. And I'm sure I could prompt it again and get it to take care of this. But generally what I've seen it do is it, it the code that it produces is anywhere from like maybe mid-level. Um, but if it's mid-level, it's like a mid-level engineer who's rushed. So like you're getting good things from it, but there are like maybe edge cases and details that are being missed. And then a lot of the time that requires reprompting and all that fun stuff. So anyways, I throw this out here. We do something like this. It logs me in. This hits my server, the Dino server that I'd written. I had written all the authentication stuff on my own beforehand. There's an interesting bug. It doesn't show the books. Um, these are, you know, books that are on my file system. The Dino server catalogs them, pulls metadata for them. Uh, Claude helped me with the metadata retrieval from um, Open Library, which was really neat. Uh, it integrated that really well. I gave it kind of uh, basically I'd built everything else except for that. So it was like a, a husk of where that needed to go and it plugged in really well. 
I also told it, hey, like let's we, we want to be able to stream these um, because that's the whole point of the project. So I was able to take uh, PDFs and it takes the PDF and renders it onto the screen, uh, which is really great. There's a percentage uh, in, down here in the bottom right. Um, some of the UI elements are kind of wonky, like this plus and minus up here for zoom is really weird. The previous and next buttons are all over the place. Uh, it didn't give me any keyboard shortcuts, so I prompted it to add those and it got it the second time around. Um, so yeah, pretty nice. But the key thing here is like this, uh, this works. This solves my need. Is it great? No. Does it need a lot of polish? Yeah, it needs a lot of polish, but it's a great MVP or a great first pass at this project. And I've been pretty excited about that, mostly because I actually have a tool to read all my eBooks locally and save my progress. So I can go to like this currently reading. And again, the server, I'd already built the server for this that takes care of all the progress, um, tracking and, and serving that data back up. So a lot of it was just making sure Claude was using that when it had the client. Some of this, like again, the UI here, a little wonky, needs to be fixed. Uh, but yeah, you can, you know, object oriented. Uh, here's, a, here's a good one. This one's an EPUB. So the other one that I just showed you was a PDF. So it has an EPUB reader as well. Always get EPUB and Mobi confused. Had to make sure it was the right one. If you hit continue reading, ah, failed to load book. We'll have to figure that out. But it loaded this time. It takes you to where you left off. So it loads the chapter or the, the cover page just like before. Um, but this time it, it kicks you to where you left off. The percentage here is busted, so that's another thing that I'll have to fix. And and maybe this is a good time to highlight something. If you're churning through code with a tool like Claude, it tends to miss a bunch of small things. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with like the context compaction. There will probably be plenty of things to fix. And, and maybe you can just prompt your way through those again I don't know if that's a good use of your time, money, or tokens, or or the world's electricity for that matter. So I'm not sure if I will do much of that. Maybe it would be easier for me to just pull this up and wire it up myself. This page isn't found. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something right here. Uh, let me pull up my terminal and make this bigger for you. So I am, this is a, a Claude code session right here. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to give it a really loose prompt and say something like, um, the completed screen does not exist. Let's fix that. We'll see what it does. We're going to continue talking while it does this because it can take some time to do this. Uh, but, um, yeah. So, I mentioned that a lot of you are probably here for my Zig stuff. I don't plan on using Claude much for Zig, if at all. Uh, I had tried, just out of curiosity. I took, um, a, actually, a, a data structure from this uh, database book that I have over here that I'm pointing to and you can't see, so I don't know why I'm doing that. But I took a data structure from that and I was like, hey, implement this in Zig. And it did okay. Um, it it had all of the interfaces that I would expect. So it had, you know, uh, it, it, was a, it was a B plus tree. So it had the ability to add new nodes. It had, a, sorry, I should say it had a function to add new nodes. Did it work? Not really. Uh, did it have memory leaks? Oh yeah, it had memory leaks. Um, so it really, it was kind of neat to have it like build out a shell with a bunch of broken code and the shell looked right. And it, it was right. The shell was right. The functions were more or less what I needed. Sometimes I had to add to add an allocator or something where necessary, but yeah, for the most part, it, it worked. The shell worked. The code did not. So then I got to come in and fix the code, um, because after a couple of prompts, it could not figure it out. So I fixed the code myself and it actually felt like a really great learning experience, which I think was actually a really good use for a tool like this. We can see this is still churning. Uh, I don't really have too much more to show on this. Um, as for what it's produced, there's not a ton. I mean, the, the meat and potatoes of this project is definitely the PDF and EPUB uh, reader and that experience. So the fact that I was able to give it a pretty loose prompt to build that and it built that part felt pretty neat. Um, however, I'm going to contradict what I just said and say that I, I think probably where this will shine the best is when you are prompting AI tools to build the things that aren't critical to your business case. So for example, maybe you have a uh, software as a service and you 
do, uh, I don't know, file-based storage as a service, your billing portal probably isn't core to your business. So having a tool like Claude generate your billing portal might be useful. Uh, it also might not. You might not want something like AI to touch anything to deal with payments because you want to make sure they're correct. I totally get that, especially after all the things I've seen it do and do poorly, um, which, again, it does a lot really well, but also some things poorly. Uh, yeah, you might not want to take that risk, which I totally understand. Uh, I also am a Flutter dev at heart uh, and in practice, too, I guess. I've got a couple apps out there on the App Store. Um, so one of the things I wanted to do, I have a really large game. Uh, it's called, well... For me, it's large. It's about 56,000 lines of code. It's called Memories of Shoal. Uh, it is a, a game that's written in pure Flutter, no game engine or anything like that. So it's very much my own opinions on how the app and game should be structured. So no documentation for it to read on how the engine should work or any fun stuff like that. The reason I'm mentioning that, I prompted Claude to do some feature work. And it was okay. Uh, it, it kept using deprecated methods all over the place um, Thankfully, Flutter makes that pretty easy to fix. And uh, it did not match the color schemes at all. Um, it looks like a, a very modern material app instead of the existing design that I had built for the app to make it feel like a game, uh, which felt a little weird. So it got, basically, if I wanted, I wanted to create a new screen and it did an okay job laying things out and connecting the data. Visually, it looked awful. So I was able to, you know, go in myself and update all of that and fix it, which honestly, that's probably the part I want to spend the least amount of time on. But um, yeah. Okay. So anyways, we have a completed view. So completed books, zero books completed, no completed books yet. Books you finish reading will appear here. Start reading to build your collection. I don't know if this works. We're going to try to find out, right? So let me grab, um, this is 46 pages. Nice little free book disguised or free uh, advertisement disguised as a book. Let's get to the end of this. Okay. Currently reading. It's been removed from currently reading. It does not show up and completed. Dang, that's a shame. So uh, this also highlights the w several things that I've said so far. It built this screen. Is it wired up? No. Do I want it wired up? Yes. Am I going to prompt it to wire it up? I might try. I might wire it up myself. I, it depends on where you want to spend the time and focus. So uh, this video is kind of all over the place. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. But what I really want to bring home with this is the idea that these tools exist. I've been on the fence for them for a long time. I put out a video a while back on Copilot and using it to learn new technologies by giving it really loose prompts and then taking the code that it has and pasting it in and then fixing all the bugs with the code, which again, I've kind of got to do that with Claude. I think that's great. I think that's a great use case. It teaches you so much. However, I do think these tools, especially at the iteration that they're at now are probably going to, um, uh, change the game, so to speak for a lot of folks. I don't necessarily think that's bad. My, Takeaway for you, if you're watching this video to this point, try them out, see how they can fit into your workflow. They're a tool, just like a compiler is a tool. And you could make the case, we were, a friend and I were talking the other day about this, and he, uh, one of his friends said like, well, you didn't build the app if AI built it for you. And you could make the case that like, well, you didn't build the app if a compiler compiled it from, uh, you know, Java to JVM bytecode. Sure, you can split those hairs however you want. I'm not here to do that. I don't want to, honestly, I don't want to participate in those discussions. They seem fruitless uh, and very philosophical. But instead, what I recommend doing, try these tools out, figure out how they fit into your workflows. If they do at all, depending on what you do, they may or may not. And then be mindful. It's very easy to prompt and prompt and prompt. At some point, you need to make sure that you are actively participating or else you're going to get into the swing of becoming someone who prompts an AI and hopes for the best as opposed to someone who can actually build software. Uh, that's my takeaway. I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. All right, have a great day.